Inception. Inception. Okay, I agree. I saw it with my grandmother, rest in peace, uh, many, many years ago. It's, it's a good story. We're sitting in like, like she couldn't see anything. So we're sitting like in like the front row, so like your neck is like this, right? You can't see anything. And she turns me like right at like near the end, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but she turns me, she goes, what's happening? Like right, like at the big moment, the climax. I was like, oh, grandma. Okay. All right. Let's choose a you. Let's choose a you. Actually, I'm not going to do the divided by four part. Why would I not choose the divided by four part, Alex? Because it's not, if the whole radical symbol had it, then I would do it. But since it's not in that radical, I'm just going to leave it as 3x minus 5. Okay, let's take the derivative. What's the derivative of 3x? 3. The derivative of a constant is nothing. This will be dx. Okay. Now, this one can be a little tricky because I actually have this, right? Don't I have 3dx? So this time, the stuff that I don't want is actually in here. So if you do want that 3, what can I move out in front of this thing? If I do want that 3, but I want to move something in front. Somebody said it. I want to move the 4, but where's the 4? It's in the bottom. So I can't move out 4. What do I move out? No, I want the 3. No, I can't move on. Someone's going to get it. One fourth, Julia. What up? I want to move one fourth, right? Because one fourth times three is three fourths. So I'm moving one fourth, okay? Ready? So draw the integral symbol. We just said we're moving the one fourth out. I have u in here. Now be careful here. Is this the square root? No, it does not have, if it was a square root, it would have no index, right? No number, let me rephrase, it would have an index. There'd be no number listed in the index because the index would be two. So what do I write for my power for this u? One over four. So if you're not there yet, we need to get there because that's, they love these problems on the AP test. Okay, they do. Throw the du in there. Make sure you have everything. Does this... Get everything taken care of. My du is the 3 dx. That's good. There's my u to the 1 fourth power. And where is this 4 in the bottom? I moved it to the front. Now, here's the new thing. I haven't done this yet. Okay? We have limits of integration. Do you see the 2 to the 7? Yeah. Right? So here's how you find the new limits of integration. This is the coolest part, at least I thought when I was in high school, was you actually, when you have a definite integral, you're going to use these original limits of integration to find new limits of integration, and then you don't even have to go back to letter x. Just keep using u's until you're done. All right, I thought that was really cool. All right, so do you remember this right here that we chose for u? Plug in 7 where it says x. Because that is my one of my limits of integration. I am. Yes, I'm going to plug in. 3 times 2. So what's 3 times 7 minus 5? 16. Make sure you put it in the same spot it came from, okay? What's 3 times 2 minus 5? That's 1. And now we're off to the races. I got a lot of work to do. Because now this is not an indefinite integral, right? I got to actually get an answer. What, Andres? All right, let's take the antiderivative of u to the 1 fourth power. What's 1 fourth plus 1? 5 fourths. Thank you, Julia. The reciprocal? 4 fifths. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just do this. But at the end, what am I going to multiply all of that by? Right? Don't forget that this 1 fourth is going to multiply by whatever I get at the end. Okay. All right, so now I'm in using what we did with 5.3, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So this is f of 16 minus f of one. Okay, so four fifths times 16 to the five fourths power minus four fifths times one to the five fourths power. And then don't forget all of that is being multiplied by one fourth. Now, this can be a little tough without the calculator. 
Whenever I see that four, I'll point, there's a lot of fours, so let me point to the right four. Do you see this four that's in the denominator of that fraction exponent, right? This is the same as doing the fourth root. So do you know the fourth root of 16? It is two. What's two raised to the fifth power? 32, very good, two to the fifth power is 32. So 16 to the five fourths power is 32. What's 32 times four? I love when David, David looks up in the sky. 128, guy. what up? Oh, that's the wrong denominator. There we go. Let me do it again. So I did the fourth root of 16, I got two. Then I did two to the fifth power and got 32. Then 32 times four gives me 128, right? 30 times four is 120, two times four is eight. Oh, oh I thought that was like the whole answer. Of the no, 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 I'm not done, I'm not done. The, no, you're good, Alan. This right here, Alan, is just that. Okay, this one's gonna be a lot easier. Anything where it says one to a power, right, is just one, right? The fourth root of one is one. One to the fifth power is one. And then what is one times four fifths? Four fifths. All right, so subtract, what do you get? But is this my answer? No, no don't forget, you need to multiply this by one fourth. Do you know what 124 over four reduces to? No. I think we can do it. What's 12 divided by four? Thank you, Gael. Three, and then four divided by four is one. So the answer is 31 fifths. That is it. Gosh, I love integrals. What'd you say? Oh, yeah, you have a question. The beginning? Yeah, let me try again. Okay, so um, you're asking, like, why did I move that out front? Okay, let me try to do this. Okay, so du, du, go ahead when you're ready, guy, if you want to go, is 3dx, right? So I'm taking account, Georgie, yeah. I'm taking into account that du, when I write du, that's going to take the place of 3 times dx, okay? But this 4 was not a part of my derivative, and it's not a part of my u. So I need to move it out to be in front of the integral. And I can't just move out a four in the bottom by itself. So if there's nothing that I'm moving out on the top with it, it really is a one. So that's why I moved the one fourth out front. Okay. I don't know if that helped, but all right. All right, let's do one more and then I'll stop talking. Sorry. I know, isn't that amazing? Because I thought it was so cool when I was learning this for the first time, because you, once you went to u, did we go back to the x's? No. no, right? So you don't have to. But the thing that people mess up, Valeria, is they'll forget that if you stick with u, then you've got to get new limits of integration. So you've got to get the new limits of integration. If you use 7 and 2, obviously the answer will be incorrect. So just for, don't, I'm going to always tell you to keep going with u, so get new limits of integration. This right here, so this is, when you see a radical symbol with that four, that means it's the fourth root, which is the same as one over four as a power. Georgia? What's the answer though? Like what, 30, no, but like, what Hashtag, I circled it? No. <laughs> no, but like, what is Oh, anyone? If I were to graph this function, and looked for, oh, do you want to go down? Oh, no, you can do it. Someone might actually learn something, so go. <laughs> if you were to graph this function, and I can do it if you want later, uh, and I looked from two to seven in the x direction, the area under the curve from two to seven of this function is 31 fifths. It makes it a lot simpler to do, yes. I mean, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say this is simple, but I would say it makes it a little easier to find these definite integrals. Are we getting this? Because I can go back and watch the replay. Okay.
Let's do number two, and then I'll be done, okay? And then we should have about 20 minutes for you guys to practice. All right, here we go. Um, Valeria, you want to try to give us our U? Almost, minus 4x cubed. And now, why did I include the cube on that one? Because it's inside that radical symbol. So you're right, Valeria. It's going to be 5 minus 4x cubed. Let's take the derivative. What is the derivative of 5? Zero. What's the derivative of negative 4x cubed? Very good. And then do I have that? Do I have negative 12x squared? It's like yes and no, right, Bernadette? Because I do have the 12x squared dx part, but do I want that negative? No. So kind of like, was it the second one? Or whatever we wanted to do, the indefinite integral, right? We had to get rid of that negative. So let's move it over with division or multiplication, your choice. What's it? So the opposite of du is the same as 12x squared times dx. So I always put my integral symbol, okay? Now this can be a little tricky. You chose Valeria five minus four x cubed because it was inside that radical. So when I rewrite this radical, what do I use for the square root in terms of my fraction exponent? One over two, but where is it? in the denominator. So I want to move this out of the denominator to the numerator. So it's not u to the one half power, it's u to the negative one half power. What's the, um, our du here is going to give us 12x squared dx, but do you see this negative? So I put du, where do I put that negative? Outside in front. Okay. Let's get our new limits of integration. Where did I? Can someone explain to Bernard where I got the half from? Kind of like when you asked about the the fourth root, right? That's one fourth. So the square root is one half. The cube root is one third. The fifth root one fifth. Okay, ready? What's one cubed? One. Five minus four is gonna give us one. Look at the denominator, is it? Negative one cubed is negative one. What's negative four times negative one? Plus four, so this is nine, and I have alarm bells going off right now. That's what I'm asking you. Because it's not, now it's not in the right order, right? It was least to greatest. Now, is it least to greatest? No. no. So you need to deal with that. Do you remember what we do with the properties? Very good. So you do one. You already got it, guys. You're amazing. So I changed it to be the correct order. And then remember, it's actually the opposite of the original. So the opposite of a negative is a positive. All right, so now we're ready to finish it. Let's add one to negative one half. What's negative one half plus one? One half, okay. What's the reciprocal of one half? Two. I'm gonna wait for David and Guy. No, no, you're there. I'm not mad, I just wanna let him talk. Yeah, we're okay? Okay. I just did the antiderivative. Yeah, you're good? Okay. Evaluate now at 9 and 1. So f of 9 minus f of 1. So I'm going to plug in 9 where it says u and 1 where it says u. Again, if you don't know that raising something to the 1 half power means to take the square roots, you need to know, not just for calculus, but just for like whatever you take in college. You got to know. All right. So what's the square root of nine? Three. Three times two. Six. Again, one to any power. It's just going to be one. One times two is two. So this answer is four. So Georgie, if you 
wanted to know again, right? We're saying that the area between negative one and one of this function is four. Now, if you'd like, Georgie, 